hey guys welcome back to today's video today we got some more new mod showcases of course there are going to be some popular ones in this video because i tend to showcase everything at this point besides maybe presets but some of these are very underrated as well so if you guys end up finding a mod you didn't know about or end up liking these mods or maybe just end up liking my non-stop rambling make sure to hit that like button down below and maybe subscribe because it is free and you can always take your money back at any time but without further ado let's dive right in the first mod up is a unisex armor called the Squire's Plate. Coming with options for 2K and 4K, and also comes with support for HCT, which for those that don't know, means that some things on the armor will move when you move. The 2K option is the base option that you get when you first install this mod, but if you did happen to want to use the 4K option, you'll have to go to the miscellaneous files where you can download it. But this mod comes with more than just its own armor, it also has its own weapon for use. I did unfortunately miss this armor somehow when it first came out. I really don't know how I missed it or what I was doing at that time, but I'm here correcting my mistake because this is probably the oldest mod on this list, but it's still very new and looks amazing. This armor is also very easy to acquire early game, and it's kind of meant to be just that, an early game armor that makes you feel cool. To get this armor though, all you need is the advanced smithing perk, so that pretty much puts it on par with other steel armors. But up next we have the mod Unequipped Quiver NG. This mod makes it so that even if you have a bow favorited, if you don't have it selected as your current weapon, it will unequip the quiver as well. This is more of an aesthetic kind of mod, nothing really necessary, because some mods make the quiver actually clip with certain armor mods, so it's nice to have it removed automatically so you don't have to unequip it every single time you leave combat. Unless you know how to use immersive equipment displays. Next up we have a new simple follower that just kind of works. This mod is called Mill Factory Hasara the Dark Weaver. Probably said her name wrong. But she is a very simple follower that you could find pretty early it's on. It's good to see you. I wouldn't mind getting out for a bit, so yeah, that works for me. There's two choices for her voice. You can use the vanilla voice that's labeled as sultry, or you can use the voice add-on that I'm currently using. She's described as looking very close to a vampire, having pale skin and sharp teeth. But she isn't really a vampire, that's just how she looked because she acquired these looks from a ritual she performed upon becoming a dark weaver. I'm still not entirely sure what a dark weaver is, but I'm sure we'll get more history attention. about her as we play with her. But there really isn't too much to her, just a new good looking follower for you to use as a meat shield. But wanted to give a quick disclaimer, this next armor is going to be skimpy, so feel free to skip. The next mod up is called Elves Elven Assassin. This mod comes with multiple variants, I believe a total of about 6, unless I miss one or maybe the mod updated while I was talking about it. But the first 3 are too skimpy for me to showcase on YouTube, just imagine the sides being garter instead of actual cloth. But if you have not safe for work things turned off on Nexus, then this won't show for you either way. But the 3 outfits I am showcasing is the latter 3 outfits and honestly, Kind of very skimpy, not going to deny that, but this mod is really well made. It does classify as a light armor though, so this is meant for a more rogue kind of playthrough and not just for charging straight into enemies. But the main reason why I even showcase this armor is because it's an alternate option outfit for Hasara. She has two options, the base one or that one. Now moving on to a new animation mod called Dynamic Female Swimming Idols. This mod has made me realize just how much water makes you move in Skyrim. I was looking for a water area to record these idols and this was pretty much the only option honestly. But these idols basically play based on what kind of armor you have on currently, but only the chest piece. Hands and feet don't really matter. But this mod you can go from seeing your character pretty much frolicking in water and having fun, like diving into the water when idle, to pretty much drowning with heavy armor. And no, you won't actually die if you let your character sit there with heavy armor, but it does make you feel bad for your character. Or at least it does for me. As the title mentioned though, these idols are only for female characters. And now we're moving on to an even more simple mod. This mod is called Pretty's Tail Mithrin. This mod, based on your selection up to 4K options, retextures the entire area. Your Tail Mithrin may not look like mine because I have a few mods touching this place which I probably will list in a video for those that'll ask about it. If the textures do come in 2K, I highly recommend you use 4K or even 8K if you can find it because as you can see, the mushrooms, the houses, and also everything placed around the area was retextured. And if you use a small retexture size, it will look stretched and ugly. So like I said, I highly recommend using 4K to 8K textures if you can find it. 
And Pretty actually just finished retexturing Apocrypha. Hopefully I just said that correctly. No one said anything about it last video, so I'm just going to assume I said it correctly. But he just finished retexturing that one, and now we have Tail Mithrin. So we might be getting an all-in-one very soon. But as of right now, we just have these two. And they might actually be two of the best ones for Soulstone. And as you can see, though, to fully experience this retexture, you will need to use Parallax. But trust me, Pretty has some of the best Parallax textures I've seen on Nexus. So it's definitely worth it. At least worth a few extra FPS drops. This next mod might also hurt you a little. This mod overhauls both the Ritual Stone and Great Winter Watch. This mod is called Watchman's Ritual Stone and Great Winter Watch. It's a pretty simple name, right? But this overhaul is anything from simple. This mod completely changes up the area of the Ritual Stone, truly transforming it from just a cliff with the stone on it that I rarely ever go to if ever, besides to just kill things for experience, to actually making it seem at least a little important to the lore of Elder Scrolls. I really didn't have to even do it before and after here, I just really wanted to show the scale of this overhaul and how much better it makes this location. But as I said, this mod also includes Grey Winter Watch, which it pretty much left alone, but only on the exterior. The interior was given such a massive change, it was almost impossible for me to do it before and after. No scratch that, it is impossible. It changes it from a simple cave with just a troll to kill to a full blown cavern to account for the changes to the ritual stone as well. And I love this mod for expanding on Great Winter Watch because it was always so boring. At least now I have something to look forward to when a y'all sends me here for 50 gold. A quick question, do you guys think this clip is going up or going down? Let me know down in the comments about that clip if you guys know. I have a feeling most of you might get that wrong because I might even forget by the time this video comes out honestly. Now moving on to the next mod which is called The Sounds of Towns and Cities. This mod has new ambient voices and items to towns and cities around Skyrim that you will randomly hear as you walk through them. But just so you guys can hear them, I'll shut up and let this play. So here we go. Hello! Now we all know about the mod animated ships, but a quick explanation for the mod. This mod adds ships to the waters of Skyrim docks and actually out in the ocean that will move around. They have their own lot as well, but you can find a way to interact with the NPCs if you somehow get on the ships. But the real reason I'm mentioning this is for the mod animated ships realistic Nord ships patch. This just recently came out and I finally have a reason to use animated ships. I kind of stayed away from it before because of the textures kind of being low quality and it didn't fit my current ship mesh so didn't really like it. But now with this patch it retextures every version of the ship added by animated ships to match realistic Nord ships. So not only will the sails be extremely high quality now with new icons for Imperials and Stormcloaks or whatever facts you run into, now the ship itself also will have much better meshes and textures when you get close to them. This is exactly what I've been waiting for and now I literally have no reason to not use animated ships because it's pretty much patched for every known conflict mod unless it just came out where only has a few hundred downloads but at least the ships look amazing now. But moving on there's a new farm clothing mod called Arc Female Nordic Clothing. These new clothes are as the title says female only and they aren't distributed to the level list you have to use the add item menu. And I believe that's because the mod author stated that these were meant to be kind of a modder's resources for others to use. And I kind of can't wait to see someone distribute these to tavern maids so that they can finally have diverse outfits that don't require their boobs to be out 24-7. These do have a bit of skin to them on the side, but honestly, it's probably to make more Nords come there and spend all their money. Two of the outfits do have two color variations, but honestly, this is a very simple mod that fits super well into Vanilla Skyrim's aesthetic already. As I said though, all we need now is a mod to distribute these to NPCs, but not through level lists because that might lead to them being on bandits with synthesis somehow. Up next for the final mod, we have a mod called Kaiden Armor Replacer. 
This mod uses assets from Armors of Velothi, but they aren't required. This is a standalone, but it replaces all Light Armor, Kaiden Armor variants with this one. This one also comes with support for HDT, so the cloth towards the leg part will move. The heavy chitin that the guards in Ravenrock wear or just NPCs around Solstheim, they will still have the vanilla look, but maybe that will be replaced next with the next mod from this mod author. Also had to look up how to say chitin, some people say chitin, but chitin is what I'm used to, so let me know how you guys say it down in the comments. But on your way scrolling down there, make sure to hit that like button, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace and love guys.